Good morning. If you would, open your Bibles to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. We'll read John's introduction to his gospel in just a minute. We're thankful for everyone here. If you're visiting with us, we put this first for a very particular reason. The remembrance of Jesus and his sacrifice is the core of our faith. This is what we do. This is literally first things first when we gather together. And we're thankful that you're here. Again, especially if you're visiting, we're thankful that you've chosen to join us and that you'll hopefully hear the center of our faith this morning. To do that, we're going to meditate on one single idea, and it'll repeat throughout the entire meditation this morning, and that is that Jesus draws near. Jesus draws near. And to start that meditation, we're going to read the first 18 verses of John, and then we're going to pray. So if you would read with me in John chapter 1. John writes, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which comes into the world, which gives light to everyone, excuse me, was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own and his own did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not by blood, nor by will of the flesh, nor by the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth." John bore witness about him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, because he was before me. For from his fullness we have received grace on grace. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. The only Son who is at the Father's side, he has made him known. Would you pray with me? Father, we praise you and we thank you for this time. We thank you that you have invited us to your table week after week to remember Jesus, to remember his sacrifice, and all that it means for us. Father, we pray now as we're about to meditate on your word that you would guide us, that you would give us a right understanding of the message that you have in your scripture. And we pray that you would stir our affections for Jesus, that we might be a brighter light here in this place. Father, go with us now and guide us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In the summer of 2015, Sarah and I were in an exciting stage of our relationship. We were about to get engaged. Everything was going well. Her family had welcomed me in despite some steep cultural differences. And my family just straight up liked Sarah more than they liked me. Everything was great. But there was a challenge that we had to overcome. We had to go through a summer of long distance. A summer of long distance. And what seemed a week or two before like a relationship that God himself was smiling upon, all of a sudden just felt broken or at the very least, not quite right. Trying to develop a relationship and continue growing a relationship through a screen just didn't work. And again, it, was, it felt at times that summer like our relationship started teetering on the edge of the end. But... Everything clicked when I got back to Bowling Green. 
when we drew near to one another, the relationship clicked. It was as it was before that summer, and we're still growing to this day. You might experience something like this in a different context. If you've had a good friend who has moved away, you know that group chats are good and they're fun, but it's not like getting all of your closest friends together around the same table. If you're a college student, calling home is a good and right thing to do, and most of you should probably call home a little bit more, but it's not the same as pulling into the driveway at the end of a semester or on a break. Grandparents, FaceTime is a good gift to see those grandbabies who live far away, but it's nothing like when they show up and you get a hug. What experience teaches us is that love works best in proximity. Love works best in proximity. Or to put this a different way, love is amplified by nearness. Love is amplified by nearness. And interestingly, John, throughout his entire gospel, wants to communicate that to his readers. John goes to great lengths to show that God's love works best and is amplified by Jesus' proximity, by his nearness to us. It's even at the very heart of this introduction that we just read. John shows us in two distinct ways that Jesus has drawn near. And he does that by taking readers back to Genesis and then by taking readers back to Exodus. Look again at the opening of John chapter 1. In the beginning... In the beginning, John takes us back to the opening of Scripture. And if you remember, in the beginning, the earth was a messed up place. The writer of Genesis says the earth was formless and void, and it was defined by darkness everywhere. But everything changed when God said, let there be light. When God said, let there be light, that dark, formless, void earth started a transformation that would take it from formless and void to something God looks at and says, that is very good. That is very good. And did you notice what John calls Jesus? Look at verse 9. The true light which gives light to everyone. The true light. When Jesus came into the world, it was like that opening statement of God in Genesis. When Jesus came into the world, it was a light that started a different kind of creation. Jesus coming into the world started a different kind of creation within us. John will go on to say that those who believe in him, those who believe in Jesus as the true light of God will be called children of God. When Jesus drew near, when Jesus came into the world, he started a transformation within us to take us from dark and sinful hearts to being people who God looks down upon and says, my children. My children, Jesus drew near as God's true light. But then John takes us into Exodus. John takes us into Exodus. If you remember from our Bible reading earlier this year, central to Exodus is a question. And that question is, who is the Lord? Who is this God of the Israelites who's making demands of the most powerful man on earth? Who is the Lord? And there are different manifestations of God and his glory throughout that book. It starts with a revelation to Moses at a burning bush. 
plagues that are inflicted on the oppressive Egyptians. The great parting of the Red Sea, pillars of cloud and fire, miraculous provision for the people of God in the wilderness. But at the end of the book, at the end of the book, there is a different kind of manifestation of God's glory. In Exodus 40, it says, the cloud covered the tent of meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. The glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. By the end of the book, the question, who is the Lord, is answered. The Lord is the one who dwells with his covenant people. The Lord draws near to his people. The Lord who reveals himself as full of grace and mercy, covenant love, faithfulness, full of justice, who does not let sin go unatoned for. He is the one who will dwell amongst his people. And in John, John takes us back to that very idea. Look at verse 14 in John chapter 1. Verse 14 in John chapter 1. It says, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. The idea here is that the word became flesh and made his tabernacle, made his dwelling place with us. And it says that we have seen his glory. We have seen his glory. Just as the glory of God dwelt with Israel via the tabernacle, we have received a picture of the glory of God through Jesus. Jesus draws near. He draws near to start within us a recreation that will make us children of God. And he draws near to manifest, to reveal who the Father is. And being a, the nerd that I am, I love this stuff. I love stuff like this where you have to go back and you have to draw upon other books that you've read, other information, that's great. But John pivots this idea of Jesus drawing near throughout the rest of this book. John wants us to know that Jesus drawing near is not limited to some theological or literary idea within this introduction. Jesus drawing near is something that is intimate and experienced. Jesus' near presence is intimate and experienced. And think of the different stories throughout the Gospel of John that show us this. Later on in chapter 1, Jesus draws near a would-be disciple who thinks, can anything good come from Jesus' hometown? In chapter 3, Jesus draws near a rabbi who is unsure about what to make of this new teacher who's come onto the scene. When you get to chapter four, Jesus goes out of his way to draw near to a woman who has been outcast in her community. Over and over throughout the gospel of John, Jesus draws near to those who are self-righteous, which is good news for church folk. Jesus draws near the blind, the lame, those who are grieving, those who are seeking him, a message at the heart of John's gospel is that through Jesus, God's love is not nebulous, it's not distant, it's here with us, it's around us, it's even within us. Jesus draws near. Profoundly, then, John punctuates this idea towards the end of his book. Towards the end of his book, John shows us ultimately why Jesus has drawn near. What do you think Pilate initially thought of when he heard reports of Jesus' arrest? He heard that there was this one who was calling himself king of the Jews. Someone who had made himself king over the Romans. This is old news for a guy like Pilate. 
another in a long line of failed revolutionaries. Such a failed revolutionary was this one that his own people had turned him in. So then imagine Pilate's surprise when he interacts with Jesus and Jesus says, Pilate, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would be fighting. And there's a contrast that John makes because there's another failed revolutionary right down the hallway. Barabbas. It takes John one sentence to show that Barabbas is fundamentally different. He is the antithesis of Jesus. John writes, now Barabbas was an insurrectionist. He was an insurrectionist. He was a violent, murderous, revolutionary trying to rise up against Rome. So you have Barabbas, the violent insurrectionist, and Jesus, the one who says, my kingdom is not of this world. My servants will not fight. And what Jesus does in this moment is he draws near Barabbas. Jesus draws near to Barabbas. Jesus, who has been revealed to be the son of God, God's light to the world, the manifestation of God in bodily form, draws near to Barabbas, who is a failed, broken, rightly condemned man. And he draws near to Barabbas for the sole purpose of taking his place. He draws near to take his place, to take the rightful death that Barabbas deserved. When Jesus drew near, when Jesus drew near, Barabbas received freedom and life. Freedom and life. Jesus received bondage and death. Or we could put it differently. Because Jesus received bondage and death, Barabbas was then set to receive freedom and life. And it's a preposterous story. It's a preposterous switching of places. Jesus shouldn't even be around a guy like Barabbas by most people's thinking, much less take his death. But what's even additionally compelling to me is that when you break Barabbas' name into its component parts, it likely means son of the father. Bar, son of, Abba, the father. So think then about Barabbas, a condemned son of the father who Jesus draws near to take his place. In drawing near to Barabbas, Jesus drew near to us. Failed, broken, condemned daughters and sons of the Father who are in desperate need of rescuing. And Jesus steps in and takes our place. And that's what we commemorate this morning. That's what we commemorate every Sunday that we come here Every Sunday, we are invited to the table to remember and to praise God that one has taken our place. So when Jesus draws near to us, he draws near to start a new creation within us. He draws near to teach us who the Father is. And in doing so, he draws near to change us from Barabbas failed, condemned, broken into a true child of God provided freedom and life 
that we currently enjoy, and the promise is that we will eternally and abundantly enjoy as well. Thanks be to God that Jesus drew near. We'd ask now that the men would come forward and serve us.